Oh, look, a fire truck trying to get to an emergency. What a great time to intervene and try to stop it, thought the citizens of Los Angeles. And these people want to run the country. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukradowski here. We are Change.org. And man, oh man, is there some crazy news to get into today, especially when it comes to foreign policy news, especially when it comes to the trials and tribulations internationally that, of course, soon will be coming to the Western world. Lots of crazy things are happening. We're going to be breaking it down from a geopolitical perspective about now how civil unrest is almost inevitable at this particular point in time. Why is that? We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing right now that says no step on dog, you can get it on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. And there's so much news to get into. We're just going to jump right into it as of course the lawlessness that we saw in the beginning of this video in Los Angeles has gripped large portions of the United States, mainly big urban areas controlled by Democrats that a billionaire financed a whole bunch of woke district attorneys in that are literally spurring on the chaos. In Portland or Oregon, the Daily Mail is reporting that the citizens there in many instances don't have any other choice but to sell their homes and move out and take a major loss on their property and their home values because of the lawlessness, homelessness, substance abuse, and criminality that the city has been going along with. Just like in Chicago, where the latest numbers have come in, highlighting at least 55 people shot in this democratically controlled city where, of course, firearms are banned. If you're a non-thinking NPC, you might be asking yourself, how are so many people shot in, in gun-free zones? And then maybe, maybe, maybe you could start to think and reconsider some of the larger injustices spurred on by the state against the citizens living there. But sadly, a lot of the times we don't hear about what happens in LA, Portland, or Chicago. We do have a media frenzy that is up in arms against the alleged misjustice of a federal judge who in Florida just decided that there is going to be a special master, an independent investigator looking into the matter between the FBI and the former president of the United United States with the corporate media screeching, oh no, an independent investigator, ah, how horrible. This as the corporate media has been making the most meaningless things the most impactful and the most impactful things less meaningless. This says, of course, American foreign policy is still moving forward in many aggressive ways. This as the United States just flew to nuclear capable military aircraft over the Middle East in order to saber rattle and to signal to Iran that at any moment in time, the United States could bomb the crap out of them. This as Russian foreign policy has also been just as bewildering as the Russians have just launched sanctions against Ben Stiller, Sean Penn, and other US celebrities that have shown their support for Ukraine. They were permanently banned from entering their country, which uh, isn't really going to have a large effect on uh, anyone. This as the Russian president also just moments ago put Russian's nuclear deterrent forces on high alert as a response made by the comments of the new leadership in the United Kingdom that does represent a conservative neocon hawkish shift in policy in that country that surely is best to escalate the situation between the East and the West. This as the Russian president also just moments ago announced a new foreign policy doctrine based on a Russian world that him and his administration will be going forward with, which could be laying down the groundwork for more potential invasions. This as largely the conflict in Ukraine has stalled. The Ukrainians are making offensive moves in the south of Ukraine. Within the last few days and weeks, the Russians really haven't made any kind of significant acquisition of Ukrainian territory as this conflict largely looks like a stalemate that could potentially even last 10 years. But it's also important to note that in Russia, Mainly, this conflict has been called as a special military operation. It hasn't been called a war. It hasn't been called an invasion. But now, under this new foreign policy doctrine, it specifically justifies Russia to conduct an invasion and, quote, intervention in order to support Russians living abroad. Now, what did Putin mean here? Is he talking about specifically the Donbass area? Is he talking about the Russian separatists in Moldova? Does this new foreign policy doctrine call for more escalations? Well, 
Only time will tell. But I think another significant doctrine that needs to be explained that Russia is openly going to be implementing is, of course, their shift towards better relations with countries like India and China, two geopolitical opposing forces, by the way, that don't like each other, but have a common friend with, with Russia now that is going to be focusing on building those relations along with other, quote, Middle East, Latin American, and African countries, which Russia is going to be looking to, quote, deepen relations with. Now, as all of this geopolitical posturing and conflict unfolds, it's also important to note that the West and East are battling an economic conflict that, of course, is having devastating effects on almost everyone involved here, as some people are arguing that Putin has pushed Europe into a very tough position, which is creating some very tough economic consequences for the people living there that could potentially lead to a depression, a currency collapse, as currently there are massive inflationary pressures put on Europe. This as their energy supply is either being deliberately cut off by themselves or cut off by Russia. This as we're finding out moments ago that Russia for right now will not be turning the gas back on to Europe, signaling some other large financial problems for the people living inside of that continent. We're going to be talking about these larger problems along with other topics that we can't talk about later on today on LukeUncensored.com. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? It's just 50 cents a day and we're going to be getting into some really spicy hot button issues that of course we cannot talk about here on this particular broadcast that new report will be available to you right now on lukeuncensored.com as we're going to have some new cool announcements new ways of working together new ways of communicating with each other all on our platform where we are putting all of our blood sweat and tears into again i do two videos every single day one of them for this youtube channel another one that i spend a lot more time on on lukeuncensored.com the video right now is available for you as we speak, and we could definitely have more of an honest, frank discussion there. I hope you join us right now, right after this video, for that important conversation and many more. LukeUncensored.com, click the link down in the description below right now. Now, civil unrest has also been a topic that we've been talking about within the last few days, but also something that we've been prophesizing for months and years on this particular independent YouTube channel, as of course it perfectly represents the larger spectrum of the problems heading towards our society that are very significant. As of course we even told you specifically on LukeUncensored.com a couple months ago, look out for developing third world countries and when things start to collapse there you could bet your bottom dollar that the problem is going to be coming closer and closer to the developed world to the western world as these problems are first felt in the poorest of countries and then the problems keep escalating and building up closer and closer to the more prosperous countries as of course these problems are becoming more unavoidable just like in indonesia where there has been massive amounts of civil unrest massive protesting massive rioting after the government there decided to raise fuel prices by over 30 percent when you raise fuel prices by that much everything else is correlated with that including food including consumer goods which all have to go up in price which of course spurs on inflation and screws over poor people even more the poorest people in this world are being screwed over first and then the tidal wave of getting screwed over is coming closer and closer to us this as the global economic problems are even being felt in china that is dealing with the significant financial ramification of them artificially building the, their economy on the fake real estate market. The Chinese also rule with an iron fist. They are very totalitarian. They are implementing the policies that Bill Gates wants them to implement. And at the same time, also squashing any kind of freedom, which is closely related to capitalism and the free flow of commerce and goods. Chinese tech giants, by the way, just reported their worst quarterly growths on record. And not so long ago, the Chinese government literally deployed tanks because people couldn't get their money out of the banking system. With more strict lockdowns ahead for China, this signals problems for other economies that are dependent on the Chinese economy. And as the Chinese government tries to squash any kind of dissent, the UK government is having the opposite approach as literally on national television, they, pl they play games with random peasants and promise to pay off their energy bills. Scenes like this as if you would see them from dystopian Hollywood movies, but no, this is real life and how far away we are straying from our civilization hey, Bill. oh my god thank we're, you we're paying your energy bill for four months oh fantastic 
No worries. Oh, oh what a relief. Thank you very much. Oh, listen, well done, you. Yes, well done, you peasant slave. You get temporary relief from the central controllers and the big bankers screwing you over. But just for four months. Otherwise, you're screwed over. And from the anger getting too serious in the United Kingdom, the new leadership there literally plans on printing more money and creating extremely intensive government spending programs to try to prevent people from, of course, protesting them over the measures that the previous government implemented that's screwing them over. Again, what happened here is is not an accident. The central controllers, the corporate heads, the bankers, the ruling elites, the billionaire class took everything they could for themselves under the guise of a health crisis. And now we're seeing the consequences of that. And the government's response to all of this is to print more money, which will create more inflation and to screw everyone over with their policies that of course in short term will work as a band-aid but in the long term a band-aid filled with pus and bacteria that was put on an open wound and will create more havoc later down the line that's just the analogy that that i have that I think it's fair. But again, the UK government is definitely not going to be one that will be looking for compromises, peace deals, negotiations, especially when it comes to the international larger political conflict unfolding. As of course, the UK government is now going to be, according to some geopolitical experts, more aggressive, more unfriendly, and more uncompromising when it comes to the larger geopolitical conflict that is spurring on the problems in Europe right now. As this new leadership even talked about having boots on the ground in Ukraine which of course would spur on a greater conflict. Now what's happening in the United Kingdom is not that much different to what's happening to the rest of the European Union. That's also discussing government intervention, printing more money, borrowing more money as a way to offset the larger energy price hikes that are coming that of course are going to have a devastating effect on Europe and create a dark winter and essentially screw over the poorest people in those societies. Now when it comes to the United Kingdom, what did you expect? from this World Economic Forum henchman that now is at the helm of the UK government, a human being that literally wished Jimmy Seville, one of the most worst monsters on the face of the earth, condolences and respect. This man, what he did to, to, to small children, what he did to, 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 by the way, people who weren't even alive, you can't even imagine, we can't, I'm going to save this topic for, for LukeUncensored.com, but for the new UK Prime Minister to cheer on Jimmy Seville of all monsters in our society shows us the larger scale of deprived, dangerous, destructive behavior that's going to be implemented by the United Kingdom that I think a lot of other people will be paying for the consequences of. And again, that's just my opinion. That's just my perspective. But but it, it, it's clear as day that the experts, the, the corporate media, they, they keep lying to you every single day. They tell you that there won't be a recession. They tell you, oh, it's, it's just transitory. Oh, it's just going to come and go. Oh, it's not going to be anything severe. In Europe, they told you, no, no, no recession. And they said, oh, yeah, it, it'll be a small recession. It'll be shallow. And now, of course, they're admitting there's going to be a deep recession there's going to be some larger financial consequences and things are not looking good especially if you are in europe that's my perspective that's my two cents here if you appreciated it and you think it's an important message share this video with your friends and family members because we all know youtube will not be doing that it's one of the only ways to get this messaging out there to the general public i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys doing that if you want to hold me accountable for anything you thought i said was wrong i strongly encourage that down in the comment section below. I love constructive criticism. I love having the ability to hear different perspectives and different viewpoints. And I think if we all should start opening up our minds to different perspectives and ideas, the world would be a better place. That's just my own two cents. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. One more video right now available on LukeUncensored.com. Love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.